problem isn't throwing people in jail or sending people to prison. It's who we send to prison. So how do we fix that? Tonight, there are serious calls for reform in the wake of our investigation into New Mexico's boomerang thugs, the repeat criminals who keep catching a break. All week, we've been talking to the people on the front lines, tracking and arresting these criminals. Now we go to the top. Here's Ryan Luby. Commit a crime, there are consequences. Courtrooms, fines, handcuffs, expectations that if you do the rest of us wrong, you have to pay for it. But here's the thing. The system that's supposed to uphold those expectations and keep the worst of the worst locked up, the ones we've profiled, is falling apart. So the problem isn't throwing people in jail or sending people to prison. It's who we send to prison. Mo Maestas, one of New Mexico's elected leaders, is one of the bigger critics. But he's been calling for reforms for years. We need swift and certain justice. He says accused criminals often languish in jail cells for too long awaiting trial, leading judges to sign off on sweetheart plea deals. Maestas believes the system is backwards when it comes to drug crimes versus violent crimes. He says drug users are demonized, that they need help, not handcuffs. And he says the violent criminals go free. To prosecute violent crimes, it is very labor intensive. You have to build a relationship with the alleged victim, and that's just not being done. Andrew Romero, Gary Coca, Abel Monje Cardoca, they went through a system that allows violent people to fall off the grid and commit crimes again. Catching them again, nearly impossible, because there's hardly anyone to do it. But that 12, soon to be 14, is still not enough. Correction Secretary Greg Markintel is just as frustrated as the 12 people on his fugitive task force team going after 1,700 absconders. It's like the math isn't even on your side. It's a never-ending game, a revolving door. This is Secretary Markintel's struggles to keep people working in the state's prisons. I hate to admit this, but I compete with McDonald's in Santa Fe for my staff. Yes, he says some prospective employees would rather flip burgers for Santa Fe's minimum wage than work in a prison that starts at just a buck fifty more an hour. So can the governor, a longtime prosecutor, change a system so badly broken? Just last year, Governor Martinez supported a pay raise for some corrections officers, which reduced job vacancies in one office from 50% to just five. She also wants to beef up the team that goes after absconders even more so criminals get a message. We have got to make sure that they understand there's a unit out there looking for you. And But the problem is, when you, when you abscond, there's no consequence to absconding. That's where she says lawmakers have to step in for once to make laws and penalties tougher and support more resources for a correction system that needs help. She also believes New Mexico needs to reinstitute the death penalty. This prosecutor and wife of an officer points to the case against Andrew Romero as a reason why. When I see my husband walk out the door, you don't know they're coming back. And I want to know that there will be justice at the end of the day if he doesn't come back because someone killed him. Because the violent people who ruin our communities should expect to go to jail, just as the rest of us expect to be safe. Ryan Luby, KOB, Eyewitness News 4.